What's up guys? I'm in Montana today with my buddy Michael Perini who's casting a fly and we are trout fishing. Mike is what I would call an expert fly fisherman when it comes to catching these wild trout out here in these streams and he's already taught me a ton today so far because I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just out here wading around in my kicks. I'm from Missouri. I'm used to fishing for stock trout in a trout park somewhere where you got somebody standing four feet from you all day long and there's 500 people on a stretch of river this long and Mike and I are basically just cruising up this river looking for little deep pockets where there might be a fish or two stacked in there. It's a lot like hunting. I mean, you're sneaking up and down these creeks. They're wild and these fish are super spooky. So we're trying not to spook them before we get in there and then casting a fly into some of that faster water and trying to pull them out of these little holes, these little eddies behind the rocks and stuff. It's fun. Oh, dude, it's a good one, dude. It's a good one. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, there he's going. There he goes. Nice. Dude, man. <laughs> That's Sick. awesome. And the interesting thing with trout fishing like this is the hatch changes multiple times throughout the course of the day. So we may come through this stretch of river, for example, nymphing, fishing underneath the surface of the water with floats or something, and catch a fish or two we may come back through it in a couple hours and they may be, may be keying in on something completely different maybe they're hitting insects on top and we've got to switch to dry flies or something like that so it's cool you got to pay close attention to what's going on in the river at that particular moment and then put on what the fish are biting on i said you're about to catch one out of here you should turn that gopro on why where at right here in this it's where this water comes uh, coming in and it makes a nice little bucket here. It's a little bit deeper. This faster stuff is where I think they'll be. You got that nymph on still? Yeah. We'll try the nymph because I've been throwing this big parachute at them and it hasn't been doing too good. Joan, talk about the trailer. Yeah, so it's pretty common for fishing out west. So when you're nymphing, you're basically mimicking insects underneath the water. You know, every fly starts off as a nymph in the water. And so up top we got a lightning bug. I don't know if you can see that. Or actually, I'm sorry, that's a pheasant tail with a bead head. And then this is what was the ticket earlier this morning. That's a zebra midge. So what we typically do is we run a float up here and that's just, uh, we don't have one on right now. It's basically a bobber. Um, if you're a trout angler, you call them strike indicators, but you go. They're a bobber for lack of a better term. Yeah, so you put this bobber up here and what that does is it stays on top of the water and then it suspends these flies. Oh shoot, I'm all tangled. Oh, it's on my shorts. <laughs> this bobber suspends on top of the water, drops down to your flies right here. And then typically you'd have a bigger fly on top. Usually we use something like a stone fly imitation. And then this is a zebra midge. And so what it does is these flies, there's a weight right here, and these flies hang up in the water column like this. And generally speaking, when you're nymphing, you're hoping that the fish are, you know, close to bottom and that this will suspend, you know, six inches off the bottom and those fish will come up and eat them. We've been having real good look, luck on our bottom fly, which has been this little, little guy. All it is is, all I did to make this is put a little bead head on tied some black thread around it and then wrapped some wire around it. It's called a zebra midge. That was all on a different uh, stretch of water this morning, so we're gonna have to, you know, figure it out once more on this part of the river. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's where it'll be. Did you say this hook was getting dull or no? No, they're not. It's not dull. Yeah, I am making excuses. I kept missing fish earlier and that was my excuse was that my hooks were too dull. You know, Mikey, you're fishing this hole right here. We've been drifting off of this fast current right here and over into those root wads. And I hooked that big brown that I just caught a minute ago, like right on that opposite bank. I mean, right up against the bank. So hopefully there's another one in there. Cause I didn't even get over into some of that stuff. Nailing the dropper fly here.
Got him. Another one. Ah! That was another nice one. I don't think, I think it just popped. No, he did break it. Dude, I'm about to tie up some zebra midges tonight. This is awesome. Fish just broke me off over there in those roots. We tied on a different lead fly here and put the same kind of silver nymph back on on the, on the dropper. That's the one we've been catching fish on. Who knows, the last two drifts in there, we've hooked one. There's a bunch of them stacked up in that fast water right there. Big one, big one. Ah, dude. I don't know, it was a big one, dude. <laughs> I think he was on the bottom one again. Dude, that was a toad. Yeah. Did you see him flash in there? I saw the bend in your eye. I couldn't, I like you, I can't keep him out of there. He's too big. Like, what do you do? Do you just back up and. Yeah, you gotta put the pressure on him. And if he breaks you off, he breaks you off. Like, I started putting pressure on him that time and just pulled it out. What you can do is, if you want him to come downstream, you just pull him this way. Okay. You know? Well, there's probably another one in there because the last three drifts have hooked a fish. Come on, baby. Be another one in there. Right there is where they're at. Right there. Got him that time. Dude, what is going on? Oh, he's pulling so hard in there, Mike. I got it up. All right, here he comes. Nice rainbow. Um, no, I think I got him. Here he comes. He had a lot of fight there to start. Now we got him out of that stuff. Come on, buddy. No net, so... <laughs> we got to kind of beach him up here. Oh, nice fish. Dude, come here. Look at this thing. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Sorry, everybody that's watching this that's professional trout fishermen. <laughs> well, it's really my fault I didn't get him out. There he goes. Dude, that's sick. This is awesome. I'm getting nervous, dude. I loved how you were just doing it, letting it go right on there. So get right up against it. There he is, there he is. Got him. Bring him down. Oh man. <laughs> it's just a nice rainbow. He's just fighting like crazy. <laughs> what did he take? He took my bottom fly. Uh-oh, we got a new hot fly. There you go. There he goes. This is like a side channel off of the main river that we're fishing here. One of my favorite spots. Not a lot of people out here usually, but it's because this is hard work, dude. Yeah, I mean you gotta we gotta hike we a little bit. Through all this crap along the edge of the river to get back in here. Yeah, we probably, we probably walked a couple miles down this river. Yeah, and something that's really cool about Montana is that so we have really great stream access laws. So any bridge you can just go access the river and as long as you're staying with it like we're surrounded by private land right now these are all little ranches and as long as you stay within the river channel uh the high water mark you're legal to fish so i know a lot of other states it's different but here in montana we have really really great stream access laws that allow you to access pieces of river like this so it's pretty sweet that we're able to do this three fish come right out of that little root wad hole today it's crazy, man, just right on the edge of it. It's like most people wouldn't even throw over there because of risk of snagging, but that's where you gotta go. Yep. So y'all can tell we found another little riffle here. That's what I call them. 
The water's moving real fast. This water's actually kind of low right now, and in the heat of the day, up in the slack water stuff, the temperature is a lot warmer than it is out there in those little deep pockets. So all the fish are congregated or concentrated in those little pockets of fast moving water like I got out in front of me here. I just caught one right in front of that limb right there. So I'm going to throw back in there. Let's see if there's another one in there. My drift is off right there. About a, I need to be about a foot further out there. There we go. This one's going right by it. I see when I caught him a minute ago that it just stopped just like that. <laughs> oh man, this is cool. I know that's a little brown, a little brownie. Caught them all on that little guy today. Rolling out. That's a pretty good day right there though. Oh yeah. Pretty good day in Montana. <laughs>